and do it quite in the right order. So when I went back for the MBA, I just stayed in school and got a master's in health administration. Then I stayed in school and got a master's degree in informatics. That's where I gave up for a little while. I want to get a law degree. That's just a question of whether I'm going to live long enough. Uh, and, uh, but, but, you know, you get in school and you just, you know, it's like this environment here. You know, it just gets so exciting and wily. Uh, somewhere in that process, someone at Anderson figured out, oh my goodness, we don't know anybody that has three master's degrees and an MD, so we might as well put them in charge of something. And most of my last few years have been dealing with uh, the Affordable Care Act, because uh, uh, when we saw that come out, we said, oh my goodness. It's kind of like, for, for some of you in the room, you may, I, I watched that entire Sunday where it got passed, uh, some might say ran through. And remember, Nancy Pelosi said, basically, just vote on it. You don't have to read it. Later, read it later on, you know, just, just, just pass it. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we were actually one of those who actually read the whole thing. And so uh, we had an aha moment and said, uh, oh, my goodness, uh, uh, there's things in here that people better know. So um, let me go around the room just a second because I want to title this. Tell me just kind of uh, your name, what you do, and if it's healthcare in any way or not. Well, coach, entrepreneur from Houston uh, in the economic data space. How many? Do you own a company or do you have employees? Uh, yes, we have. How many? Uh, we have close to 100 employees. 100. Okay, you'll see why I'm doing this in just a little bit. Okay? Kefi, uh, founder and CEO of Medifund, and we are building the patient referral community for physician. And we are here in the platform, and we have about 20 employees. 20. Okay, that's another kind of magic number. Okay? Olga Rodriguez, healthcare consultant. Um, I'm re re-engineering my little company. So it's you're you're the sole I employee. I am. Yes. <laughs> That's another magic number I'm going to write. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to write down all these numbers. I'm just kind of grouping them a little bit. As you, we'll see. Yep. Uh, Colin McKay. I have a health uh, tech uh, startup. I've got um, three uh, part-time employees. Uh, we've got a. Uh, we developed a uh, product uh, for restraint and seclusion prevention in, in the uh, psychiatric space. And we're looking oh, to boy. see how uh, you know, Obamacare you know, is going to help us formulate you know, a value proposition. You know, if there's a business model in it. So I'm very interested in, uh, huh. you know, we also develop a lot of products uh, for uh, health literacy, uh, decision support tools, um, optimizing the uh, clinical process, um, you know, patient-centered, uh, you know, also tools for the clinician. Yeah, I've already suggested that one of the people this group might want to get over here is uh, John Frenzels, one of our MDs. Uh, He's working with, uh, like everybody in the world is, but we're doing a lot of work with IBM's Watson. Uh, Sloan Kettering is also doing a lot of work, and uh, you know, it's very teasing to think what NLP and machine learning can be applied to healthcare. Uh, there's some that think it can't be, it's too complex, there's others that say it can be, but um, how do you go about doing that? And it's, it's extremely interesting and the reason, the reason I'm interested in it also is because we have tons of unstructured data. So this is probably the wrong room to mention unstructured data. But unstructured data is what I'm doing right now. I, sounds like sentences when it comes out, but go try to mine it and you can't get any useful information whatsoever. Uh, she does it every day too. Uh, unstructured data. So Watson's pretty good at sorting through unstructured data. But there's a lot of things we say that can be interpreted a lot of different ways, and two doctors don't use the same terms for most anything. And so how do you get useful information out of that, and how do you use it to help with decision support and 
not just here's the world's literature about that. That's getting relatively simple nowadays to present a, a, a collection of information to people. But how do you actually use it? And uh, that's where things get a little bit tricky. But there are some people trying to do that. Um, and uh, it certainly is a very active field of development. And uh, that might be someone you might want to help. Well, what we're trying to that'd be very interesting. But what we're trying to do is to provide, um, you know, patient experiences. Using yeah. Case so study model. I'm sorry. Thanks for bringing me back to that because I'm going to go a different direction now. Unfortunately, being doctors, our focus predominantly is on what we put into the medical record. That's the world's most important information, right? <laughs> so you just go about mining all that and do the decision report around that. If you think about what the patient thinks of their care, what their preferences are, what, what they're experiencing, we don't capture that much at all. In fact, the only time we do capture is when we ask them and then we put it in one of our notes. Uh, we're, 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 what we want to do is is you know um, define and measure and assess you know patient communication and patient provider interaction so you can do that you know how you do that one of the cheapest forms of storage is is text files so just like we're doing with doctors and i know no one's doing this because everybody's focusing on this side of things give patients access to just call into a number and talk to their heart's consent pain. They can tell you, I woke up today, I didn't feel good, my back hurt, I was able to grocery store, da 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 You'll have patients that will tell you their entire history. Now mind that for all the useful information like you're seeking. How would you get along with your doctor? Have them do that every day. They don't have to fill out surveys anymore. They don't even have to depend on what the doctor's interpretation was. There is a whole library of words there that hasn't been mined by anybody and won't be mined for a while, because again, we focus on what the doctors say. And yet that unstructured data has a lot to do with patient reported outcomes, patient's perception of their care. There, you'll get more information from that than you will from the doctors, because the doctors do like these two, three well, we, we work with uh, uh, nurses and more importantly, uh, psychiatric technicians. Yeah, so we're, once again, we're interpreters of what we think is going on. You can go straight to the horse's mouth and get everything you want to know. Nobody has the time to sit down and just listen to a patient ramble on. Heck, give them a telephone and a, and a, and a recorder and you got all the The 15-second rule. What? The 15-second rule, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, we, that's right. We click them off after about 15 <laughs> seconds. Well, here, they'll, they'll tell you how their whole day was. And if you really want to know, I mean, that can be applied to a lot of different fields. You know, uh, Angie's List and things like that are rather archaic technologies to type all this in and provide feedback. But the whole, there are people who just love to talk and capture it and then use it. Yeah. I'm from Taipei Economic and Cultural Office. Uh, it's the, the function is like a cultural link. And uh, I come here because uh, Dr. Mama invited me to come here. And I'm also interested with the uh, technology industry. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, Ashish Patel. Uh, I work in a couple of startups here. One's an uh, open data initiative. We use referral patterns to, to build ACOs and pre-formation. And we also inform the kind of strategy for hospitals or for partners. Hmm. How many employees you got? There's a few. Hey. Hi, I'm Duke. I'm currently a consultant for oil and gas company. Uh, help the company align with uh, the business with technology. Um, why am I here with uh, life science and all this? Because uh, I find it to be, you know, uh, get a lot of good things and. It's more sexier than oil and gas. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, honestly, I do see we'll that. <laughs> but you know, like a big company now, they're encouraging their employees to uh, towards wellness. You know, better health because yeah. it's uh, it's it's better. You know, um, uh, 
healthier employees are more productive, less insurance costs, and things like that is that is important to the company's bottom line. So uh, I see that as a as a trend as well. How many employees you have? About five thousand. <coughs> You're talking, yeah. Okay. The, the company, of course, not me. Yeah, here over here. Okay. Oh, let's go back here first. Yeah. Oh, I'm Chashi Uh I belong to the middle group. We basically organize conferences, and that our focus is Asian countries. Ah, how big is your group? Uh, we are here seven people, but wherever we go, we organize. I mean, uh, employ the local uh, coordinators uh, to help us in our uh, conference. Okay. Uh, Robert, I'm a CPA, and last year I'm a partner in Forte Group, and last year we merged four medical staffing companies, so that's kind of why I'm here. My name is Douglas Dalton, I'm the CEO of CRG Medical, it's a company here out of Houston. We deal in uh, patient safety evaluation systems. Uh, we just won the OMC award for patient safety evaluation systems where we actually can take uh, information from a CCD, automatically populate the common formats. People don't know what that is, but the common formats are from the H or Q, the H of Healthcare Research and Quality, uh, for patient safety organizations. And you mentioned the Affordable Care Act. Well, one of those things that are in there that Nancy Pelosi said we will find out later is that for the health insurance exchanges, and there's a line in there on page 34 that says that in 2015, January 1, 2015, that means it has to be in place next year, uh, that insurance or health plans that have, are involved with the health insurance exchange, that have hospitals as customers with 50 bits or more, uh, they have to have a patient safety evaluation system in place or else they cannot pay them for the insured patients that they're seeing, and they have to ever send that to patient safety organizations. So we use uh, NLP, to find unstructured data from the current medical records and automatically populate the forms at a click of a button and the only one is called the purple button. And so just like the blue button from the VA is for patients to get the information from the medical record, the purple button is for to get physicians to record events or send events from a CCD document, a continuous care document, which has all the data to get certified yeah. as an EMR, you have to have it be able to produce a CCD uh, for sharing information and populate this automatically so we can create more knowledge. And the reason why I do that is the Office of the Inspector General says that 14% uh, 40, of the knowledge that's inside the medical record is be for, for patient safety and should be reported out as, as, as used. So 86% of the knowledge that we already know, that we're talking about the explicit knowledge that's in there, that may be in, in structured, structured or unstructured data, it's not used for, for, for recruiting healthcare. So we only would be learning from 40% yeah. of our knowledge. Well, that's probably certainly true. So here's someone who actually read the act and saw how Not the whole act, just what I need to know. Saw how it was Hi, I'm Timothy Arnez. I'm actually a student at the World Center of Entrepreneurship at the University of Houston. Also a double major in MIS. Uh, why I'm here, both my parents are nurses and my sister's a nurse now. And I, I kind of want to build a, a, a company or a business that's centered around you know medical uh, the medical industry and nursing informatics as well. So, good. Lots of opportunities. I'm Kanal Singh from Indian Army. I recently came to Houston. Presently, I'm a legal and financial advisor of Platinum Houston. Just here. We're just saying uh, kind of who you are, what you do. Okay, I'm Paul, and I do absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So I'm looking for that's ways a great to job to get paid for too. <laughs> Thereby, I want to get, I want to eat every once in a while. So <laughs> ways to uh, make money on Obamacare, and so it doesn't be such a pain in my ass. But <laughs> effective ways that the uh, IT industry can um, utilize what is existing in, in their arena, from oil and gas to other industry verticals, and how that marries up with where the regulations are and how Obamacare will create opportunities for that industry. Yeah, good. So I'm Jacob Shea. I started Broward Care Research and zero employees. <laughs> zero employees, that's good. I am Nobody can file an HR complaint against you. I'm Lynette Pond, I'm a software developer and uh, here to learn about, about care. And 
I, I hear that the technology is a big component of yeah. it to you know, get to the point where it's called the results that it wants to achieve, technology is a component of that. So it, it is. I'm Dimitri Dimitri Yanis in the morning. I'm the chief medical um, physicist for Texas Oncology and Oncology. The company in the Texas side has approximately 1,500 employees. The corporate side had approximately 200 employees. Uh, that's in the morning. And in the evening, I try to see how I can make uh, particle therapy cheaper. Uh, particle therapy meaning try to treat a cancer with radiation not the regular way the x-rays another way that will be comparable in cost with current radiation therapy as opposed to between few to ten times more expensive and you can go and see it here because you do have one and the the, the side company has three you know what i did uh, so nobody's anybody unless you failed at a few things so uh, I have failed at two electronic Beckel radical record implementations. Uh, we're trying our third right now, but one of the ones I failed at was iNomad, because culturally we were not ready for an electronic. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I know I know I know I know Med better than anybody knows I know Med because we used to sit it's an esoteric joke so with the programmers all the time yeah. and trying to improve it. But we weren't culturally ready for it, and so Texas Oncology adopted uh, I Know Med and use it every day, and do a pretty fair job at pulling uh, outcomes type data out of it. Uh, I'll send you the bill for the missing here up here. <laughs> <laughs> but all, all in good order. Yeah, I spent many days out in Berkeley with the programmers, and uh, it just failed. Um, so, Tom. Yes. Before you start, what was the name of the person who is implementing or rather who's dealing with the Watson? John Frenzel, F-R-E-N-Z-E-L. He's, uh, we just this year appointed him as uh, something that most people have called Chief Medical Information Officer. We never really had one of those before. And uh, he's an anesthesiologist, but a very smart informatician too. Probably uh, those two get along real good. Uh, and. Uh, He's been doing a lot of that work and talking with uh, lots of people. Um, so, I the reason I ask people about the sizes of their companies is because uh, the Affordable Care Act, uh, like as current world exists, uh, really does kind of depend on who you're talking to. Uh, big companies, medium-sized companies, and small companies. So before I go that direction, um, somebody happened to know what, well this could be a lot of curves, but let's just draw something like this, and this. Uh, this is uh, published uh, by my good friend uh, Lee Newcomer at United Healthcare. Uh, who's the chief medical officer for United Healthcare? <clears throat> and unfortunately, this curve is kind of like inflation. Obviously, I didn't put uh, any sort of uh, any any kind of uh, scale over here, and wage increases and things like that over here. Uh, lately, it's probably been more like that. This is the cost of health insurance premiums. And uh, Lee is fond of saying uh, that uh, within your lifetime, uh, your lifetime, <laughs> your children will not be able to afford health insurance. You won't have it. In the United States. In the United States. Uh, right now, we spend about $10,000 a year per person on health care. And uh, most of the rest of the world, that's uh, somewhere in the order of half of that. And you would think that for that kind of spend, we would have superior outcomes. And yet, of course, if you look on darn well, almost every measure of uh, public outcomes, uh, meaning life expectancy, immunization rates, death mortality, infant mortality rates, et cetera, et cetera, we're like, Portal. We're, we're always near the bottom of the charts. And I know that's a commonly cited beginning, 
But, uh, boy, you put those two together, and it's a pretty cynical outlook as to what's going on. One of the reasons I don't like the term Obamacare is because Obama didn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> that trend was going on already. Now, again, I warned you that I grew up in a state called Nebraska, which is about three states north of here. A uh, very conservative state. Uh, boy, if you're a Democrat there, you're a lonely person. Uh, it's a very Republican state. Um, I haven't voted for 30 years, so even though I kind of grew up a Republican and thought I was a Republican for most of my life, I'm one of those people who, uh, actually as time has gone on, has gotten less conservative and more liberal. And 